So this is the, the first video in the series about uh, bicycle wheel buildings where I will just also also mostly talk. And here we have an old tubular tire bicycle wheel and we'll use it to explain some of the basics before we get into more details. Now for bicycle wheels when they are built the main idea is for them to be strong and not too heavy at the same time. So those are two conflicting um, conflicting uh, criteria. So how it's been done it's a marvelous engineering feat using spokes because spokes under tension while they are not able to withstand anything pushing onto them if they have no tension but when they are used in high tension on over a, a rim they are capable of doing just that so that the wheel can carry load of the of the driver and all the impacts on the road now uh, how how it is done uh, for let's see this here we have a rear wheel i chose a rear wheel because it's uh, a bit more complicated than front wheel why because here we need to have space for many rear sprockets for the cassette and we still need the rim to be when you place it in the on the bicycle in the dropouts the rim needs to be in the middle but as you can see here the this part takes a lot more space than this part so these spokes need to be at a bit of a tighter angle the, their angle when you when you compare it to the this axis is a bit nearer to the 90 degrees than this angle so in order for them to for the wheel to be for the rim to be in the middle these spokes need to have a higher tension because they are not uh, don't have such a good uh, mechanical advantage because they are pulling from practically vertical while these have a nice angle so they can they can pull rim more easily to the side and that is something to be aware of when when you are building wheels and for real wheels especially right hand side spokes are usually chosen to be about two millimeters shorter than the left hand side spokes because they are going almost straight for straight towards the rim while the, the left hand side spokes have a bit of a more angle and longer longer way so it's it's a simple mechanics and elementary geometry and I would now explain another reason why spokes are laced the way they are because they're all at an angle and they're in interlaced among each other there are good reasons for that first thing we will talk about these spokes that are coming at an angle uh, on some wheels especially the modern hipster front wheels on fixes you can see them being laced ra radially where the spokes go straight up to the spoke hole they are not going at an angle and they're not be being interlaced what is the problem with that? Here, let's see. This side, on. Uh, this side, it's, it's better. No black. Okay. So here, I'll put my hand behind. You can see that this spoke is going this way. It's tight and it's pulling that way. And this spoke next to it is pulling in the opposite direction. They're almost directly opposite. There is a slight angle that's necessary because it's impossible to it's difficult to lace wheels if one spoke comes over the the head of the other spoke but it's it, the, the goal is to get as close to that without them overlapping so they're almost pulling directly opposite to each other hence these two holes are being pushed against each other by the spokes so there's nothing pulling off the, the hub flange material trying to tear it but it's actually being compressing it and this allows for very high tension of spokes while not damaging hub flanges so they don't have to be very thick and very very heavy that is the first reason why spokes are uh, laced like this and there are uh, some more reasons the other reason is because when a wheel when a rim uses some sort of force and it's being pushed and pulled and, and turned when a spoke comes out like this this is very long and from the beginning of the hub's flange where the spoke is leaned on it to the beginning of the spoke hole 
this is the length of the lever that a spoke can work with. If you build wheels with fewer crosses so that spokes are not at this much of an angle but going a bit more straightforward and especially if you build radially. If you build wheels radially, spoke has almost no lever to work with and to hold the, the flange in place. That is very nicely explained in the book I mentioned, um, written by Oz Brand. So I will not go into many technical details and you would have to take my word for it or read the book. So that, that is another reason why it is important for the spokes to have as much uh, angle as close to 90 degrees. When you look from the spoke hole, when you pull a line like this from from the axle center to the spoke hole, this should intercept it as close to the 90 degrees as possible. And this is achieved by when placing spokes number of crosses. I will explain this also here, number of crosses. That is actually the number of, when you look at these outer spokes, how many inner spokes does it cross before coming to the, to the, to the rim. In this case, we have Take this spoke for example, okay, we're looking at this one. Its first cross is made by passing by this spoke. Many people when they count the number of, of crosses miss this first one because it's so close. That is the first cross. The second cross is this one. The third cross is this one. And the fourth cross is this spoke because after that it, it goes to the, to the rim. And you can see that it goes over these three and then under this one. There is an, a good reason for that, I will explain it also. So this is the, the lacing pattern and every other, every spoke is done the same. And so we have like uh, lacing four across, this is a 36 uh, spoke, spoked wheel, so this is the, the maximum number of crosses that can be achieved with a 36 spoked wheel. And before explaining the reason for this, uh, interweaving, I will just address the number of, of crosses. When you want to build a wheel and you want to calculate how many crosses is it possible to achieve, because you, you want to go to the highest possible number, but without this overlapping the adjacent spokes head. Here it's, it is, a, there is a bit of overlap and it's not very easy to work with these wheels, but it's, it's borderline, not, not all the way across. Anyway, you need to take the number of spoke, uh, spokes of, of the entire wheel, in this case this is 36, and divide it by 9, and then run down to the nearest whole number. So in the 36, 36 spoke wheel, it's, it's 4. That is the, the maximum uh, theoretical number of crosses. Depending on the thickness of the hub's flange, uh, this number of crosses and the, the angle and the, the diameter of the rim that can change. It's simple ge geometry, but uh, in, in general that is the rough guide that y you will not theoretically or practically be able to go over that number of crosses, but sometimes it's good, especially for w when you get just the whole number, like 36 spoke wheel, you, you might want to go one, one cross even, even smaller. For 40 spoke wheel that are a bit exotic, used on tandem bikes and, and similar, uh, then four, four across is, is okay, because 40 divided by 5, uh, 40 divided by 9 is just 4 point something, it's, it's not 5, so you, you can go with 4. And the same goes for 32 spoked wheels that are a lot more common. In that case you cannot go over 3 because uh, 30, 32 point divided by 9 is like uh, 3.5 or, or, or 2, sorry, something like that. But uh, so, so that is the, the optimal number, the highest one you can get when you round, round it down to the, the whole number. For 24 spoked wheels it's like uh, 2 across and the same goes for 20 spoked wheels. Like, yes. So that, that's about crosses. And why, why does this go beneath the spoke? Well, this is the reason. I will look at this drive side for this explanation. Okay, so when we are trying to use force using the, the chain to propel the bicycle forward. The chain will turn over the sprocket. Now it's mounted. Okay. So if it's any use of making a video, is to make things visual. So a chain goes over the sprocket and it pulls it. But at the same time, 
the wheel is standing against the ground and so while this tries to turn it around the ground pu pushes it and so here we have this sort of force and, and up, upside we have this direction of force and so the, the result of that is that these spokes that go uh, in this direction will become a bit tighter while these spokes that go in the opposite direction will come a bit looser so when you make a cross like this tightening of this spoke while you're putting in the driving torque will cause this other spoke even though it, it will lose some tension but the tightening of this spoke will push just a little bit more against this one so it will sort of compensate for this spoke losing tension and at that is very uh, important because as I said in the beginning the wheel cannot hold any weight by spokes having no tension at all because when you put the spoke just when it's loose and you put it against the ground it will it will bend it will break but when it's under force it can carry load these are very loose spokes this is just built quickly for demonstration it's not a well built finished wheel but uh, so, so th those are the reasons uh, why the wheels are built the way they are and there is also another thing uh, I mentioned spoke tension uh, spoke tension is usually limited by the strength of the rim when you're building a wheel you want spoke tension to be as high as possible without damaging anything because uh, loose spokes make uh, wheel be weaker and can carry less load it will not make the ride more comfortable because the difference of the deflection of the rim when the spokes are tight or loose is practically none it's not measurable really and that's uh, how to say it, a myth or something and so you want the spokes to be uh, as high tension as possible but uh, without damaging anything so uh, the limiting factors are the strength of the rim this rim is not very thick, it's not a double, uh, it hasn't got very very thick walls and it's not deep so it cannot carry a lot of total tension on all the spokes and that is one limiting factor and with rims that are deep and that can take a lot of uh, tension on the spokes without being deformed the limit is the interface of the nipple and, uh, and the rim because if you put too much tension on a spoke the nipple will just start to burn, to damage this interface and so it will damage the rim. So those are things to look out for. And uh, another thing to consider when building wheels is that I said that the right hand side spokes generally on rear wheels especially have more tension than the left hand side spokes. But you don't want uh, left hand side spokes to have too little tension because in that case they will become uh, loose and start unscrewing and loosening even further and the wheel will lose tension so we're again back to the topic that we need the maximum tension that the rim can withstand because rim is the, the weakest point and if not building uh, crossed if you're building red, radial then even flanges are also another weak link but generally if you build properly lace properly uh, and without that radial nonsense in that case rim is the, the, the weak point so you want the, the tension to be uh, as high as possible without overdoing it in, the, in which case the rim will become uh, damaged or lose, lose straightness or trueness so you would have to, to fix it. And we'll come back to that later when we talk about uh, building wheels and the last stages, how that can be checked. And I don't, I don't know if I have missed something that I wanted to explain in this introductory video but I will add it in the comment section or the video's description later now we will go back to, uh, we will go to the next stage uh, that covers the, the choosing of components and uh, that are important for building a, a good quality bicycle wheel so that's it for this video thank you for watching